Corporation does not pay. How long are we going to hang around here, Stan? I'm giving him five more minutes. Uh, nice wood, nice bricks, lovely roofing. They'll look good on a school and better on the kind of house we're uh, investing in. <laughs> What's the laugh? <laughs> I told those bums to have men here. Well, I... Uh... I didn't mean nothing, Stan. They, they wouldn't dare not send the men over. It looks like they're daring. What are they? Nothing but a bunch of two for a nickel dumbheads who can lay bricks or put up a roof. Well, don't get sore at me, Stan. I ain't done nothing. I've waited for them long enough. Come on, Hod. We're going places. Anything you say, boss. I say we're going to find out who's running things around here. And if the answer ain't Stan Dawson, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. Bad. <laughs> In the interest of good citizenship and law enforcement, we present Crime Does Not Pay, based on the famous Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer series of short subjects. In just a moment, you will hear Building Blocks, starring Richard Durr. Now, Crime Does Not Pay, starring Richard Durr as Stan Dawson in Building Blocks. At the turn of the century, the term was graft. Today, the term is racket. Fifty years ago, misappropriation of public funds was a practice confined to a few corrupt politicians. Today, such activity is part and parcel of organized crime, founded on the same methods which enable the underworld to creep into so much of everyday life, intimidation, terror, and death. Stan Dawson was considered a smart cookie in the district where he operated. He and his lieutenant, Hart Westby, were unknown to the vast majority of the plain people in whose midst they lived. They certainly were unknown to Tom Benson, Whitey Walker, and their comrades in the building trades, until the day when Tom, Whitey, and the rest of the union board met to discuss new work for which contracts had just been signed. All right, man, discussion's open. Uh, Tom? Whitey Walker has the floor. Just a question, Mr. Chairman. Will the new school building mean bigger income to the union? Well, it can and it may not. How so? Well, it seems to me if putting up the new school means just a few jobs than the men working on it, well, there'll be only paid-up members. It won't bring in any more dues. But if there are a lot of jobs, well, men behind in their dues will be paying up and will be taking in more new members, too. Yeah, sure. Well, has anybody seen the plans? How big a job is it? The plans are filed at the city hall. Plenty big, Whitey. Plenty. Then it should be good for a lot of people. If you're talking about the new school, it'll be good for you. If you fellas do like I ask. Mm. This is a private meeting, gentlemen. Strangers are not allowed. Get him, Hart. Strangers not allowed. Yeah, get him. The big shot. You want to see us wait outside? Shut up, you. You heard the boss, didn't you? I said shut up. I came here for a purpose. You listen. Do we have to take this, Tom? I don't see why. You'll see why. Now, listen. I'm Stan Dawson. This is Hart Westby. Never heard of you. You have now, smart guy. And if you know what's good for you, you'll listen, see? Accidents have happened before on new buildings. Guys can get killed on scaffolds. We don't have to listen to your threats, Mr. Dawson, whoever you may be. Sit down, shut up. I'm the chairman here. Right. Now get this. I'm running the building trades racket in this town, see? Okay, you get it now, do you? Well, get this, too. I'm declaring myself in on the new school. Truckman's organization has learned its lesson. They're cooperating with me, see? Tell him, Hod. <laughs> a truckload of bricks can make an awful mess of a man. When the steering gear goes bad, all of a sudden... Understand? Okay. So here's the pitch. The truckers will see to it that I get the building materials where I want them. 
You characters are going to see to it that I get the labor to build me some nice places out of that material when and where I want it. Everybody on the school job donates one day's work to me, Stan Dawson. You'll be on the city payroll, but you'll work for me. you work for me, that is, if you know what's good for you. I'll let you know when and where. <laughs> what you're so surprised about? Look at them, hot. A real bunch of dummies. They never heard of this racket before. <laughs> Okay, okay, Mr. Dodge, you got the lot, six of them, I'll pay cash. I, uh, I think you ought to understand, Mr. Dawson, the land and that development is reasonable because building materials are so scarce here, Bob. <laughs> I'll worry about the building materials. You give me the lots, how much? Uh, uh, with, uh, $50 a piece, Bill. Oh, right? 300 cash, I'll take title right away. Mr. Dodge, I'm a fast operator, I'm gonna have houses on those lots before you can say I'm a bricklayer. <laughs> Mr. Dawson. Rob, in any place. The carpenters will take care of it for me. Okay, Mr. Dawson. They usually like the wood off in one corner of the lot. Like about here? Then start unloading. Hard will give you a hand, won't you, Hard? Me? Handle them planks? Oh, you're big and strong, aren't you, Hard? <laughs> and if that driver's nice enough to deliver us a load of lumber to this lot like he's going to deliver bricks tomorrow and roofing the day after like we planned, the least we can do is give him a hand unloading, see? <laughs> How long are we going to hang around here, Stan? I'm giving them five minutes more. Nice wood, nice bricks, lovely roofing. They'll look good on a school and better on the kind of house we're uh, investing in. <laughs> What's the land? Uh, I told those bums to have men here. Well, I, I, I didn't mean nothing, Stan. They, they wouldn't dare not send men over. Looks like they're daring. What are they? Nothing but a bunch of two for a nickel dumb heads who can lay bricks and put up a roof. Well, don't get sore at me, Stan. I, I ain't done nothing. I've waited for them long enough. Come on, Hod. We're going places. Yeah. Anything you say, boy. I say we're going to find out who's running things around here. If the answer ain't Stan Dawson, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. Bad. Okay, Benson, you too, Walker. Oh, it's you, Dawson. Why don't you and your hoodlum shut that door, Dawson, with yourselves on the outside? Still a wise guy, aren't you, Walker? Wise enough not to play ball with bums like you. Should I let him have it, boss? Not yet, Hart. But he'll learn. They all do. State your business, Dawson, and you know my business. I want this union to assign men to my jobs. Are you prepared to pay the regular scale? Are you kidding? Look, Dawson, we're not sending any men from the school job over to your lots on city time. Get it through your thick head. Save the name calling, Walker. We've got special treatment for characters like you. I've been laying bricks for 20 years. Hoodlums don't scare me. Let me have a I'll handle this. Now get this straight, Benson. I bought me some lots, see? The truck drivers got sense. When I tell them one load a day gets delivered to my lots, my mistake, they do like they're told. So I got all the material I need. From roof to plumbing, from flooring to electric fixtures. The city will never miss the stuff. Now, I want that material put together into houses on my lots. I want your men to do that building one day a week each while they're on the city payroll, period. Get those men on my jobs, Benson, and I ain't kidding. That's all. Come on, Hod. Yes, dear? What's wrong, Tom? Nothing, Grace. Nothing. And what'd you do that for? Because I want to talk to you, dear. What about? I want to know what's been on your mind these past few weeks. Well, not a thing, Grace. Not a thing. That's not so. I've been married to you for 15 years. I know when something's wrong. Is it the school job? School's going up fine. Lots of men working. Good thing for the whole town. Is there... Is there graft, Tom? <laughs> I 
suppose so. The city contract. But I thought you and the union were going to fight Graft, huh? We are. But... No but. There is. Someplace. There's something wrong, and I mean to find out what it is. I'll get it. No, here. no, no, I'll go. Very well, Tom, but you don't get off that easily. Hi, Benson. Yeah, hiya. I'll see you at the office. You'll see us here. Now, keep out of my home. Don't be childish, Benson. That's better. Nice of you to invite us in. Yeah, real nice. What do you want? Workman. In my house. You know that, Benson. Is anything wrong? To... Oh, oh, excuse me. You can stay, lady. Yeah, uh, you can stay. Grace, go back into the living room. I said she stays. Well, I... I don't understand. Not necessary. Oh, but it is. You see, Mrs. Benson, your husband is refusing to cooperate with a building contractor's protective association, of which I happen to be president. And my friend here is executive secretary. The contractor's protective association? What's that? Oh, uh, we, we protect contractors against unions like your husband's that, that refuse to let men work on certain jobs. Tom? You don't let men work. Well, that's not You right. don't understand. You... This isn't a legitimate job. But the contractors. You better tell me, Tom. Go on, Benson. Tell her about it the way you see it. This man has stolen building materials from the school job. He wants the union to send men over to build for him while they're on city time. Well, that's stealing, too, and we'll have no part of it. So this is why you... Tom, I think these men are leaving. That's only your husband's way of telling the story, Mrs. Benson. Oh, I think you'll see it all differently in a few minutes. Let go of me. Take your hands off my wife. Work him over, huh? With pleasure. Why, you... Hold still and quiet, lady. You know what I'm supposed to know. You dirty rotten thing. Your breath. You need it. Oh. Tom. Attaboy, huh? Tom. Take him. Oh. I'm break a river, too. Oh. Oh. Well, that do it, boss? Yeah, yeah, okay. Tom. Tom, darling. Shut up, you. I want your husband to hear this. I'm going to say it only once. Now, this is an order, Benson. I want men on my lots. Get them over there. Understand? No men. And your wife gets what you got. With trimmings. In fact, get over to my place yourself. Monday, a.m. That's all. You know what's good for you, you'll... You'll do like you're told. Let's go, Hud. In just a moment, Crime Does Not Pay will continue with Building Blocks. we continue with Crime Does Not Pay, starring Richard Durr as Stan Dawson in Building Blocks. The Benson household was an angry and fearful place after Stan and Hod slammed the door behind them. Grace helped her husband to his bed, torn between fear for him and anger at the men who dared to terrorize decent people in this manner. Tom nursed his bruises, controlled his anger, and found himself full of fear for Grace. The following Monday, Tom made up his mind and led some of his friends to Stan Dawson's lots to begin work on the new houses. It was a day or two later, back on the job at the new school building, that Whitey stopped Tom on the scaffolding. Uh, just a minute, Tom. I gotta get up to the next level. You can talk a minute. I can't. I gotta hurry. Why? Because you wasted time on Dawson's lot the other day? So what if I did? Look, Tom, you're the boss in our local. The other men follow you. And you're leading in the wrong direction, Tom. Why? None of your business. Now let me get up above. It is my business. Like a lawyer says, you're compounding a felony. I asked my neighbor's boy about that. He looked it up in a law book he studied. It's still my business. Well, so long as you drag other guys in with you, it's everybody's business. I'm sore, Tom. I'm not going to stand for it. 
The truckmen are. I know about them. I don't know why they're doing it. But it still doesn't mean you can do the exact opposite from what we decided at the board meeting. Well, maybe I know why the truckmen are doing what they're doing. I don't care why they're doing anything. Whitey, that shiner I was wearing, the tape on my ribs right now. You think I fell off a ladder, maybe? Maybe you did. And maybe I took a beating. It wouldn't be the first time. In the old days, In the old Tom... days, I didn't have a wife. Look, I know Grace, Tom. If Grace knew what you're doing... Grace doesn't know about anybody except me. Oh, that's what I'm saying. If Grace knew what was happening, she'd be as sore as I am. Why don't you tell her? She's scared enough now. So she'd be a little more scared, but she could talk to the guys. They'd go along with you. They got families, too. That's Tom. I think you've gone chicken. Well, you can stock this in your car for what it's worth. No two-bit hoodlum is going to make Whitey Walker do anything he don't want to do. Take it or leave it. Well, Benson, nice to see you working here. Me, is it? Sure. It's always nice to see a man who gets wise. Isn't it hot? You bet, boss. Trouble is, not enough men got wise. Now, look, Dawson, I'm doing the best the I best can. The best isn't good enough. Work's going too slow on my project. School will be finished before these houses are. Then I got to go pay labor. And that's against my principle. Especially when I can get the city to pay the men for me. Isn't that right, Hot? You sure think of every gimmick, boss. So I want more men over here, Benson. And I want Whitey Walker with him. I talked to Whitey. He's stubborn. Maybe I should talk to Whitey. He still won't come. And until he comes, his buddies won't come either. Maybe this uh, Whitey character needs a uh, lesson. Whitey's got no family. You won't get him like you got me. Look, Benson, I'm through kidding. I want a real crew on this job tomorrow, understand? I'll try. I can't force them, Okay, man. so you can't force them. But if Walker learns his lesson... Oh, no, I don't know. No, but I know. Come on, Hard. School's going to begin for Whitey Walker today. Hold it up, Rito! Another couple of buckets of the hot stuff and we'll have the roof pretty well finished. Hot stuff, eh, Walker? Beat it. Non-workers ain't allowed on the scaffolding. Ah, but we're tourists, Walker. Feed it. Now, ain't you going to show us the sights up here? Like that that church spire over there? And the hot stuff in the barrel down below? Now, what is that stuff, anyhow? Don't you know pitch when you see it or smell it? <laughs> pitch. Like tar. Say, Hard, remember that character we tarred and feathered a couple of years back? Yeah, yeah, I sure do. <laughs> Boy, did he holler. <laughs> Look, I told you guys to scram. It's dangerous up here. For us? Yeah, for you. How about yourself? Oh, I've been lots higher than this. Yeah. The higher, the longer the fall. Save it. You don't kid me. One question, Walker. Are you going to work on my job or aren't you? I'm too busy earning an honest living. Yeah, you can be honest. Don't matter exactly where you work. What would a mug like you know about what's honest? Hey, watch what you're doing. I'm watching. You better watch how you talk to the boss. He's not my boss. Maybe some other fellow. Be careful, Walker. Let you know when you're in a spot. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Look at yourself, talking smart. With me in front of you. Hard behind you. Nothing the other way but empty space and a barrel of pitch. Now answer me straight. Are you going to report over on my lot tomorrow morning? No. All right, Hud. It'll be an accident. Hey, cut it out. Here Here you go, bud. A long way down. (laughs) Hold I, Hud. Right in the barrel. Friends, the first business of this meeting tonight is to discuss the funeral arrangements for Whitey. Any questions before we start? Yes. 
I've got a question. Bob Harvey. I understand why he was your friend and all, but I'd like to ask why Mrs. Benson is present tonight. Our board meetings are private, aren't they? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Bob. Will you let my wife tell you why? Thank you. Grace? Gentlemen, I asked Tom if I could come tonight because, well, Whitey was our best friend. They both feel guilty about his death. Mm, Well, an accident can happen to anybody in our work, Mrs. Benson. Accident? To Whitey? He was as sure-footed as a cat. The scaffold was as safe for him as the sidewalk is for me. Are you suggesting that Whitey's fall was no accident, Mrs. Benson? I know it wasn't. Tom knows it wasn't. That was no more accident than Tom's black eye and tape ribs were an accident. And Tom got those in the front hall of our house. When Stan Dawson and Hod Wesley paid us a visit one night. Uh, Tom! Is that why you said it was okay for us to work over on those lots? Why? Well, I had to. They said they'd hurt Grace. I, I should have called her bluff. Why'd he be alive today? You should have told us. Since when can hoodlums like Dawson pull stuff like this on decent working guys? I move we turn him over to the cops. But there's no real evidence. Only my word that Dawson threatened to teach Whitey a lesson. But you can get the evidence. Get it? How? You can find a way. You'll think about it. You've got to. You know what they'll say about your union. Racketeer controlled, all that if you don't. There must be a way to get Dawson and Westby, both of them. I won't rest. Whitey won't rest until you find it. I got your call, Benson. You want us? Yeah. You and your boy, both of you. We're here. Yep, we sure are. I want to talk private. Come over here. What's up? You... You trying to shake down, Benson? Of course not. I just thought it'd be more private over here near the pitch barrel. Well, it's, uh... It's uh, awful uh, hot here, ain't it? You work up above, you get plenty chilly. Don't feel hot down here. Okay, okay. This, this is private enough. What's, what's on your mind? A little contribution. Oh, hiya, Bob. Maybe Stan and Hod here might want to contribute to Whitey's funeral. Flowers or something. It is a shakedown. Oh, nothing of the kind. I saw you talking to Whitey the day he fell. We thought you might want to send regrets. You must have been friends of his. Hey, uh, what's the... What's the uh crowd collecting for... I don't see no crowd. Do you, Bob? Hey, hey, what gives here? No, Tom, I don't see anything. Just the guys I work with who kind of miss their buddy. Of course, they've got their tools with them. Hammers, chisels, trowels. You know, Stan, that a trowel has a mighty sharp point? And I sort of seem to see some bricks around, too. Well, what, what, what you think you're doing now? Oh, nothing. Just pushing you back toward the pitch barrel and the fire. Under it. You dumb. Hey, he's got a gun. <laughs> he had a gun. Now he's got only a busted hat. I'll take care of you all. Right. Hey, quit coming. You, you'll get me burned. you get me burned. You won't let go into the barrel, huh? Like what he did? What? Well, what do you want? I, I, I didn't do nothing. Stan pushed him. Stan did Why, you stand Will you tell that to the cops, Westby, will you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk. Don't, don't hurt me. Don't, don't hurt me. Okay. Stay where you are. Be hope, Riley, Matt. Yeah. Hold these mugs while we call the cops. Okay. Everybody else, back on the job. Come on, man. Hey, three of us ought to be able to hold two of these. <laughs> three of us, that is. And a barrel of pitch. Crime does not pay. Richard Durr, who starred as Stan Dawson in Building Blocks, will be back with you in just a moment.
Now here in person is Richard Durr. I think the moral of this story is rather obvious. As it happens, it does not lie with Stan Dawson, although his kind are all too numerous everywhere. To me, it lies with Tom Benson and his friend. Whitey had to die before they realized the truth. That when the decent folk, like you and me, play along, even a little, the costs skyrocket in terms of money, graft, taxes, corruption, let alone in terms of self-respect and even of life itself. Sometimes it takes too long for the decent citizens to become aware that for themselves as well as for the criminal, crime does not pay. Thank you, Mr. Durr. Crime Does Not Pay is written by Ira Marion and directed by Mark B. Loeb with music composed and conducted by John Gart. Technical advisor is Burton B. Turkus. The events, characters, and names used in the story you've just heard are fictitious. Any similarity is purely coincidental. This is Bob Williams speaking.